Welcome to Animal Zone, where we will share what everyone from psychologists to cardiologists agree on, that having a pet can change and even save your life. Whether it be a cat, a dog, a bird, or even a tortoise, having a pet in your life may be one of the most rewarding things you can do for yourself and for the pet. Today we'll be talking with Larissa Wall, the pet rescue expert from Hallmark Channel's Home and Family. After that, we'll be visiting the Santa Barbara Humane Society, where Executive Director Carrie Burns will be telling us about their important work. And later, we'll be joined by the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, and she's going to be all ears when it comes to bunnies. So don't go anywhere, there's lots today on Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs Project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Larissa, it's such a treat to meet you and be with you. Thank you. It's a treat to meet you. I am fascinated to know what is a pet rescue expert? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I grew up doing a lot of animal rescue work, whether it was dogs, cats, bunnies, guinea pigs, whatever. And so when I started over with Hallmark Channel and talked to them about allowing me to do more of the animal work, it really kind of fit that I know the ins and outs of the rescue world. I'm not a trainer, I'm not a vet, but I know Rescue 101. And so it became the pet rescue expert was my title. Now, have you rescued your own pets? I have rescued many pets. For real? How many have you got right now? Pets. Three foster failures at my house, one foster failure at my dad's house down the street, and then many fosters that I do manage to give up eventually come in and out, and that's just current animals right now. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're going out looking to adopt a pet at an animal shelter, how do you sort of focus on what will make a good pet for your home? It's a great question. My biggest, biggest, biggest tips and words of wisdom for that is actually to start before you even step into a shelter. You really have to learn the breeds because it is so easy to go into a shelter and trust me, you will find at least a dozen dogs you fall in love with just by looking at them and, and their temperament in, you know, when they're just staring at you saying, take me home, take me home. So it's really important that you know before you step in what's going to be a good animal for you in your lifestyle and your energy level. That's the other thing I, I warn people. Know your energy level because if you're someone that works all day and comes home and just wants to sit on the couch and watch some reruns, you need a dog that can match that energy level. If you love waking up at 5 a.m. on Saturday and going for a three mile run, great. Find a dog that matches that energy level. It's going to make for such a successful companionship. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of a lot of shelters don't have breeds per se; they just have mutts. Yes. Is there a way to kind of determine what's the right mutt for you? Yes, because a lot of mutts, which uh, I have to say, mutts are my favorite, but they still usually have a predominant breed, whether it's a shepherd or a husky or a poodle or a terrier. There may be a whole conglomerate of other stuff in there. There's usually a, a, a a breed, a predominant breed that you'll see most of their traits in. So if you can kind of narrow that down, and let's say you do have a lot of energy and you want a, a big dog that can exercise, go for something with a lot of shepherd in it. Oh. Or, or a husky, you know, if you have a big amount of space, or maybe even a terrier if you're looking for a small dog, because terriers usually have a lot of energy. Yeah. So talk to the people who work there, try to find out, you know, get yourself familiar with what the different breeds kind of look like. And then the other thing I would say is 
and I don't know um, if you're also talking about rescues, but rescues are a great way where they have a lot of breed specific rescues. So even if you want to adopt through a shelter, you can get a ton of great information from rescues and kind of do your research that way and then go into a shelter. Now, when you bring them to your home, is there a way to kind of introduce them to your, uh, your space and their space? Uh, are there any tricks to make it go smoothly? Oh my goodness. It, yes and no. It depends on every dog, I would say. However, there are definitely things you don't want to do, <laughs> put it that way. I have always found from my personal experience that if you have dogs at home already, you know, always do a meet and greet in a neutral location. I know people say that a lot, but it's really true. If you just suddenly open the door and in comes this new dog, your dogs might freak out, they might freak out, and it ends up being kind of that first impression that goes awry and might never get back on track. So if you have a neighbor or a friend or a roommate or a sibling that can take your dogs out to a park on a leash and you bring the new dog out and just do a really neutral meet and greet, that can be very helpful. I also think that when you bring a new dog home, you have to keep in mind that these animals have possibly gone through a lot of stress in a very short amount of time. If they were given up or lived in a house for a week and that didn't work out and then brought back to the shelter. So you have to kind of mentally prepare yourself and put your head in their space and realize that this is all new to them. You need to give it a little bit of time. And I also like to keep a leash on a new dog in the house. That way I can keep a, keep an eye on them. I don't let them have full run of the house right away. And I keep sometimes, even if I'm on the couch and watching TV, I keep my foot on the leash. And that way I can always know where the dog is, make sure the dog's not getting into trouble. I do not keep a leash if I'm not home. That's an absolute hazard. But if you're home and able to keep an eye on the dog, it's always good to kind of make sure you're aware of its surrounding and set it up for success right away. Well, that's a good tip. Now, what, what about a, a, a dog, maybe it's been fostered and didn't work out of failure, comes back. Because some animals are, are frightened. They've had a bad experience with puppies. How do you get past those those crises? Like, I know we have a cat who happens to not like the sound of a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. I don't like the sound of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. what, do you, what do you do? How do you get that animal past that fear? You know, there are a lot of different desensitization uh, methods. And I would say, depending on the severity of whether it's a cat or a dog, um, of a fear, I would recommend a trainer. I'm not personally a trainer, however, I have helped some of my own dogs with desensitization and, you know, slowly incorporating something that they're a little fearful of on a very low level and then kind of working up and obviously combining that with some treats. You want to make whatever they're afraid of a happy experience because most likely that's the reason they're afraid of it. Something happened or it's something unknown and it's, it's scary just like it is to people. So if you can combine something happy with something maybe a little scary, it can over time mean that they will grow to not be so fearful. However, if it's worse than that, if it's anything that could actually cause another animal harm or a person, I would say a trainer immediately. Wow, I, I've gotten so much out of this. You're <laughs> amazing. You. You, you know, you're more than a pet rescue expert. You're a pet rescue goddess. Thank you for coming on Animal Zone. I like Zone. that. Thank you well, very hope, much. Hope to I have really you back. I, I hope to be back. Thank right. you, and thank you for all the work you're doing, spreading awareness. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back after these words. Hi, I'm Jeffany Telson with Rescue Cats, and you're watching Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help 
at unityshop.org. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. Well, we're here today at the Santa Barbara Humane Society with the Executive Director, Carrie Burns. Carrie, thanks for having us. Thanks, Arthur. Who's your little pal? Oh, this is Justin. Uh -huh. He is wonderful. He has the biggest ears in the world. Isn't he great? Yeah. He is actually partially blind, and oh. he's eight years old, but he's just my little lap dog. Actually, he sits, stays in my office almost every day during the day, and he loves it. Is he available for adoption? He is available for adoption. All right. <laughs> You've seen him first. He's a future movie star. Um, Carrie, you came uh, th through the animal world, uh, various places. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your history. Oh my goodness, it's kind of what have I not done is an easier question, Arthur. Um, I've been in this industry for over 20 years and I've worked with shelters all across the US, Mexico, Canada, and Australia. And I've helped them to implement new programs so they can do more adoptions and educate the community about really what shelters are and what they have to offer. And for a good portion of my animal welfare career, I also did disaster relief work. So I was in Hurricane Katrina, did the largest pit bull fighting ring bus with the FBI, um, done wildfires, you name it. You know, pets are part of the family. Yeah. And so when there's a disaster that hits, you wanna make sure your animals are safe too. And sometimes our team had to go in, whether we had to repel in or by boats or just walking in and bring the animals back and reunite them with their family. And that was the best thing ever to watch a family be reunited. I know, I can only imagine, and especially at things like Katrina, it was just so heartbreaking to see. Sometimes animals never did get reunited with their with their family members. They didn't. You know, we had about 10,000 animals that we dealt with um, in Lamar Dixon, which were the housing area for all the animals that came in. Most of them were reunited with their families, but those that weren't were probably the street animals anyways, and so they went out to all the partnering shelters across the United States. and were able to be adopted. Speaking of shelters, what makes a successful animal shelter? Oh, a successful animal shelter? That's easy. Yeah. Not having any pets come in, right? <laughs> a successful animal shelter is one that we can, you know, make sure that if people don't have a place to leave their pets. Let's say, you know, a family member passes away and they can't keep the pet or they're moving and the new place doesn't allow them to take their pet. Um, that there is a place to be able to bring the animals. Um, we want to be a temporary shelter and make sure that we can turn around and get these guys adopted as soon as possible. That's our success, is making sure that they find their new forever home. <laughs> now the Santa Barbara Humane Society has a long history. I think we're over 100 years old, is that right? Yes, we What's started your... in 1887. And, and this building is, is a historic home, isn't it? It is. The Beck family, actually this was a farm around here, so the Beck family farmhouse um, is right behind us here. And the, the Beck family actually donated five acres back in the 1960s to our organization. So we're the third oldest Humane Society in all of California. Um, and it's wonderful because we've preserved a lot of the buildings and a lot of the, you know, the history that goes with this. Speaking of Humane Society as a word, it's kind of confusing because I, I, it's almost like a generic term. I've heard of Humane Societies as the Humane Society of the United States and there's this Humane Society. How do you, how do you separate? What, what, what is the Santa Barbara Humane Society compared to the other ones? That's a really good question and people get confused on that a lot. Each Humane Society is its own backyard homegrown Humane Society. So it's very, each one is local. We're not affiliated with the Humane Society of the United States, the national group. They do a lot of work for us and in the political realm and you know coming up with the laws for the animals and that's great but there's no direct connection same with the you know national ASPCA um, it, every SPCA and every humane society is a local entity and a local shelter and that's why when we talk to people it's like give locally you know you're going to help the animals right there in your own backyard and that's what we really want to do so we're not we're all individual and we're not connected I got it now I know here you have dogs that are available for adoption and you also have kitties. We do. You know, we've got to share the love, right? You've <laughs> got to have dogs and cats um, because a lot of people like like all, all animals and dogs and cats are obviously the biggest pets in, you know, homes. Um, approximately 68% of families have at least one pet in their household. So, you know, dogs and cats seem to be the most popular. So that's what we have for adoption here. And since you've been here, how, how have adoptions been going? Oh my gosh, this community in Santa Barbara has been great. Um, I started here about eight months ago and we've actually doubled our adoptions um, because we've been doing a lot more, you know, you have to tell the community that what animals are available. Uh -huh. And so by showcasing them on, you know, the internet, on websites, Facebook, all those types of things, they can see who they want to adopt and then come in and 
hopefully they go home. Wow. What's your wish list for the Santa Barbara Humane Society? Oh, my wish list. Uh, we have so many wonderful things coming up. I think, you know, we need, we would love to have a dental x-ray machine. We would love to have a brand new state-of-the-art campus. I don't like to really call them shelters anymore. I think he's getting a little thirsty. Yeah, should we, should we want to take a little break let's for a drink a of water? Let's take a little break and then let's we'll, talk about, we'll the, talk about the, future. the future. Okay, Excellent. we'll do Thanks. that for you. Good. I'm Sally Jordan. I'm a dog adopter. I believe in this so fervently. Giving a dog another chance at life, just a few years of kindness and comfortability and warmth is a wonderful gift you can give to some little dog who otherwise would not have that opportunity for joy. But selfishly, the joy has been all mine. The dogs I have adopted have brought me so much warmth, so much comfort, so much joy. Their little senses of humor, their little individual personalities have so enhanced my life. So really, adopting dogs, particularly the old and handicapped, have been of great benefit to me and have really been a selfish, on my part, joy. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. And we're back with Carrie Burns, Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Humane Society, and Justin, who Justin. Justin had a little bit of water between the break and is feeling very, very spry. Um, here, I was going to ask you, you know, there's a lot of animal shelters around the county. Is there some way that they can work together with a common goal to help the animals? Yes, absolutely, and we communicate all the time, and that's what makes it great for all the animals, because if we work together as a community and all the animal shelters come together, maybe Justin would do better up in the northern part of the county, or maybe a big husky would do better down here. So we can say, you know, who do you need? Who has not been adopted yet? And how can we help you get that animal adopted? So we do stay in contact, we do talk, and we really help each other out. And that's what it's all about, because some people just want to go in, find their pet on that first time, and then go home. And that's not what always happens, because we need to make sure that that animal's a right fit for your family. You have to think about that too. So we can call other groups and say, hey, they're looking for a young chihuahua or a, a young pit bull, you know, that has this, this, and this characteristic. And maybe we can say, please go to Santa Maria or go to the county, you know, facility. And that, that's how we work together to get all the animals adopted. You know, you were telling me earlier about uh, Katrina and the crisis uh, that happened, how you rescued many, many dogs and cats. But w what can people do to be Pro proactive in case of another emergency because unfortunately here in California we have a lot of emergencies between earthquakes and we have uh, mudslides and fires and even rollovers on the freeway. Uh, what's the best thing you can do to help your animals? Well first be prepared for yourself. Um, make sure that you have enough if you have medications for yourself, food, water, keep all of that for at least 72 hours. For your pets Make sure that you have a crate if it's a dog or a cat. Make sure that you have a leash and a collar, that your animal is microchipped because that has information, a little tiny microchip that's just right under the skin, and that they have a tag. So if they're found, that they've got the information on there. Make sure that you have their food, their water, and their medications, and any vet information or paperwork about your pet also should go with them because if you do need to board them anywhere, they're going to ask for paperwork to make sure that they're up on their vaccines. Is there a, a, a general rule of thumb of how much water per day an average dog needs? It depends on the size of the dog mm -hmm. and it depends on the temperature outside, so that can really vary. You know, as, as we saw earlier, Justin told me he needed a drink yeah. because his mouth was open and he was panting, which said that he was getting a little warm. So he just took a few sips and then he was done. So you just need to kind of measure and gauge on your own animal's, you know, intake of what 
what they need. More active dogs, just like humans, if you're running a half marathon, you're gonna need a lot of water. Um, and with the dogs, they're gonna need enough water to keep them you know, hydrated. Right. Uh, I was going to ask you earlier, a wish list for the future for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. What's on your list? Gosh, my, my number one wish would be a brand new state-of-the-art campus. Um, we've been very blessed. Our facility was built in the 60s um, and it's still pretty old. So we'd like to build a new campus because a lot of people say, oh, I could never go to a shelter. I would cry or I would take them all home. Well, we want that to be a fun place for people to come to and learn about animals. You don't have to come here to just adopt. We want you to come here and learn about, you know, wh how do animals, what do they like to eat? What should they stay away from? What about cats? What should they climb on? So we want it to be an educational you know, facility. So just a nice big campus would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, we could use a digital x-ray machine because like humans, animals need to make sure that their teeth are taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it keeps them healthy for their life and you want them to live a, a good long time. And so keeping their, their teeth healthy is very important. And there's always you know, things that we would love to have, more toys for the cats and more enrichment toys for the dogs. Um, so I think with most shelters, you know, donating, you know, cash typically, you know, giving money is the best thing because then we can buy the specific products for the needs of the animals. That's great to know. So I guess we're going to be brushing our and flossing our teeth more often, huh, Justin? We are, <laughs> definitely. All righty. Well, thanks so much, Carrie. It's great to be here, and, and good luck with the Santa Barbara Humane Society. You have a website people can go to. We do. It's www.sbhumanesociety.org. Come check out everything we have to do, and Justin will be on there unless you come adopt him. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back after these words. Hi, my name is Annie O'Donnell. I'm a veterinarian in Santa Barbara. I've adopted pets from animal shelters in the area, and it's highly recommended. They offer a lot to our lives and go ahead and visit the animals at the shelter. You'll find wonderful little pets there. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your entertainment, The Pet Psychic, as we enter the Animal Zone. And we're back here on Animal Zone with Laura Stinchfield, The Pet Psychic, and she's brought two friends of her, Jean Silva and Kimmy Swan, and they brought their buns. <laughs> Tell me about buns, first of all. Um, BUNS is a private nonprofit organization that operates the rabbit area at the Santa Barbara County Stray Animal Shelter. And you have a beautiful little white bunny, well, big white bunny on your lap. What's, what's, what's... This is Carol Ann. She is a New Zealand. Oh, all right. And she seems pretty content right now. She's a good lap rabbit. She loves to be pet. She's very friendly and she likes to snuggle. Pretty great. And you've got... And this is Arby. And he is quite the little lover. Wow. <laughs> Arby comes from the food chain? He was found in an Arby's parking lot down in Los Angeles. Oh. And both are these both available for adoption? Yes. Oh, terrific. Well, you know our pet psychic has an ability to tell us a lot more about mm -hmm. what these great little creatures are thinking. So maybe I'll turn it over to you, Laura. Okay. Well, let's talk to them and ask them maybe what kind of homes they want. Mm, that would be good. Okay. Okay, Carolyn. What do you want to say? You want someone to love you every day and pet you every day and kiss you every day? You want laughs and music? You love music? You also like greens? Whoever adopts you needs to know about bunny nutrition? Well, I am sure that Jean and Kimmy will make sure that that happens. Absolutely. Carrot tops are the best and parsley. 
and blueberries. Wow. Blueberries are critical. Oh. <laughs> you think everyone should know that there's a lot of bunnies at the shelter? And that if you don't suit them, there's probably another that does? Wow, that's awfully sweet of you. So we all want homes? You're very friendly. You love people? Like, you know, Jean has told me that that a lot of bunnies don't get adopted that are white and have red eyes. And that's what you have, that are white and have red eyes. And what do you want to tell people who think about that? You think that's silly? Because if you look in your eyes, you can see the love. I so agree. We're so sweet. We're not demons. No, of course not. Straight from the bunny's mouth. Does our other little friend yeah. want to say anything? Arby, do you want to say anything? This is an interesting day. It is an interesting day. You're supposed to pick a home? Well, you could tell people about what kind of home you would like to have. Have you thought about that? I know you're kind of a baby still, but have you thought about what kind of home you'd like to have? One with like a guy? You like guys that like strong music? Oh, there's a lot of music loving there. Who would have ever known? Do I know the smell of licorice? You love that smell? Is that fennel maybe? Oh, it's definitely fennel. fennel. Yeah. If a woman loves you, that's okay too. You don't mind if you change your name? Why you don't like the name Arby? Some people make jokes about eating me. You, you wanna do click and treats? Yeah, that's right. Like Arby's makes a good point, right? A lot of bunnies are clicker trainable. Easily. You can train them to do agility. They'll jump out, they're really good jumpers. They can do like 36 inches from a standing start. Wow, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. Thank you both for bringing in your sweet little bunnies and really an eye-opening experience. I didn't know they were so talented as well as being so cute. They're very trainable. They're very intelligent. Wow, and if people want to know more about buns, can they, uh, do you have a website? We do, it's buns, B-U-N-S-S-B dot org. Fantastic, well we sure appreciate you coming in today on Animal Zone. And uh, we're going to hippity hop to a couple of brief messages and we'll be back right here on Animal Zone. Please go and adopt a doggo and cat, they are the best, there's nothing wrong with them. They simply been dumped from a relationship, who have not been dumped? Please go and give them the true loving relationship they deserve. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Thank you for watching Animal Zone. When it comes to animal rescue, you are the heroes that make all the difference. To find out how you can safely and simply adopt an animal, please visit animalzone.org. See you next time. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie, wanna be your canine of mine. Friend for all 
time I'm so glad you're my best friend